Hello everybody, my name is Charles. In today's video, I'm going to talk about a special filter. It's called the Vanishing Point Filter. The Vanishing Point Filter will allow you to place any object, such as a photo or a painting, onto basically any surface in Photoshop using the correct perspective. It's a pretty simple tool to use and the results are amazing. So have you ever had a room where it was completely empty and you wanted to put some wall art up, you have some photos you took, or you have some paintings that you would like to put up, but you just don't know how you want to arrange them on the wall. We're going to use the vanishing point tool to put some art on this wall. And it's something that I'm sure we've all come across. And you can either take a photo like this and even take a, a photo of your wall art and you're going to be able to use perspective to place it on different walls just to see how it looks. So let's see how we can use this photo and some art that I have or some pictures I took and put them on the wall in perspective. So first, before we do anything, there's a couple of things we need to do before we can actually use the vanishing point filter. So this is the first image we're gonna place in perspective. We need to copy this to the clipboard. So if you hit Command A and then Command C, we've copied it to the clipboard. The next thing we should do is create a new blank layer. Placing the vanishing point results in a separate layer preserves your original image. And you can use layer opacity, uh, styles, blending modes. So keep it separate. So I'm gonna create a new layer. And then I'm gonna choose Filter vanishing point. So now we are in the vanishing point dialog box. And the main objective in the vanishing point dialog box is to create a vanishing point plane. So the first tool up here at the top is your create plane tool. And what we're going to do is define four points and Photoshop is going to make a perspective grid. So what you should look for when you're creating your plane, you want to look for a reference or a line as a guide as you create your perspective. And in this photo, it looks like this floorboard here, the molding on both sides is a good guide. So I'm going to click and I'm going to create four points. And right now you see that my plane is red, which means that it's not in perspective. So these handles here, or what you're going to be able to adjust because you want this plane to be all blue. So if I'm moving this plane and now you can see that it just turned blue. So that means that it's probably in perspective. If it's yellow, uh, you could probably use it red. No, it's, it's not in perspective. So that was the create plane tool that we used to make that grid. And we have this arrow up here, which is your edit plane tool. So things your edit plane tool will do for you. If I click on my grid, I can move it around. If I need to reposition it, if I drag any of these handles, I can extend it. So with the edit plane tool, I can move, resize, extend this grid. Also another feature that is very useful, I'm going to extend that part of the grid all the way down to the floor. And if I hit Command or Control and see my cursor changes, and if I pull out, it has actually caused the grid to draw across the floor. So now if I want to try and fine tune this, I can drag any of the edges something like that. And there I have drawn a plane across the floor. Now this tool up here, it will set the angle between the selected plane and its parent. So if I change this angle here, you can see that it goes, brings the floor up and down. So who knows how this was actually shot, this whole angle of this room. But so I changed the angle of the floor and I'm going to drag it over a little bit more and I can 
adjust the corners just like that. So now my floor looks a little bit better. I'm going to bring in that photo. It's on the clipboard. All I have to say is Command V and there is my photo. So I can move it around and you can even see that the floor has got the photo in, in perspective, but it's not gonna go on the floor. So that's pretty big. So I'm going to click on the transform tool or T for the transform tool. And I can grab the handles here, hold shift, and I can scale it down a little bit and I can use my transform tool here and move it wherever I want to. So that gives me an idea of how I would like this photo to look on the wall. Once I click away from it, I am no longer in the transform tool. So you saw the create plane tool, edit plane tool, the transform tool, and the marquee tool is the selection. So when this came in, it was a selection and it was at this dotted line, so that's the marquee tool. Hey, if you're getting value out of this so far, hit that like button. Over here on the toolbar, there's an eyedropper tool and a paintbrush, and they work the same as they do in regular Photoshop. And here's the clone stamp tool. Just to show you, I'm going to use the brush tool, and here's all the parameters. Here's the diameter, the hardness, opacity. So I use the marquee tool and come down here and I'm going to make a selection around this, whatever it is on the wall right here. I'm going to use the brush tool and I'm going to paint over it. So see, that's one way to use the brush tool and the eyedropper, but if there had been some kind of texture or some bricks or something, it would have painted in perspective. I was just showing you that you, if you're gonna use your brush tool do you have to use the marquee tool to select it first? Also, I could use the clone stamp tool. And here's all the, the diameter of the brush up here, hardness, opacity. And if I press the Alt key and sample, I am cloning away that little area on the wall. So that was the clone stamp and the brush tool. So now let's come over here and create another plane. Again, I'm using the side of the wall. And I'm gonna come up here. I'm kind of guessing where this area is and okay see it's a pretty good plane and again I'm going to use the marquee tool I'm going to select this area right here I'm going to use my clone stamp tool again hold alt or option sample and I'm cloning away this object and I'm going to say okay and come out of this create a new layer and I have another image here command A to select the image, Command C to put it on the clipboard, come back into my image and choose filter, vanishing point and say Command V to paste it. And I'm gonna drag it and it's pretty big. And I'm gonna press T, hold the shift key down and try and make this a little bit smaller. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger and move it there. And so I have two pieces on the wall and say, okay. So now I kind of know how two things are gonna look, two photos in perspective. I'm going to make a new layer and choose filter, vanishing point. Okay, so now we're gonna create a couple more planes using the molding down there as my guide. I'm gonna create another one over here. So now I'm gonna click on my marquee tool and I'm gonna make a selection of this door. Click Command C to copy, Command V to paste, and then I'm gonna use my marquee tool to pull over this door. I duplicated the door and it's in perspective. Hit T, hold the shift key down, and I'm going to scale this door down a little bit. And you can flip this copy, change the side of the door, that looks even, that actually looks better. Or you can flop it. So you can flip or flop it. I just flipped it to make it open the other way. So we've used the Create Plane tool to put two photos on each wall here in perspective. We've used the Marquee tool to duplicate and copy this door and move it over. So we can kind of get an idea 
uh, we want to maybe change a room, add photos, all with the vanishing point filter. If you want to know more about Photoshop, click on this playlist here. If you haven't already, subscribe and like this video. And remember, it's never too late to learn. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.